welcome back to this course on organic chemistry in biology and drug development. We have uh, finished the part 1 that is the biochemistry part, organic chemistry in biology means basically biochemistry and uh, in the drug development area we have also uh, studied a number of topics and the last topic that uh, I, I have taken I had taken up was the uh, polyketides because we are studying the antimicrobial agents and under the heading of antimicrobial agents we have different antibiotics and then um, we have done how these antibiotics are made spe specifically the biosynthesis of penicillin. Uh, we also have done how the bacteria acquire resistance uh, against the against these anti uh, antibiotics or antibacterial agents and then we went on to a, a, a very important class of compounds which are called polyketides and polyketides molecules are um, the characteristic feature of polyketides uh, or secondary metabolites which follow the polyketide biosynthetic pathway. Uh, they are having either alternating COCH2 group or they could be having a double bond. Uh, like CH double bond CH or they could be having uh, all saturated carbon framework, but all these these two carbon units are derived from a ketomethylene. So, basically it is ketomethylene which alternate uh, which alternate, but the status of oxidation of the carbon bearing the carbonyl can vary. It can be carbonyl, it can be hydroxy, it can be uh, double bond or it can be even saturated one. Okay. Now, I told you about uh, that there are different types of polyketides, uh, polyketide synthesis one is PKS uh, 1 type 1 and then PKS type 2 that is the major classification there are PKS type 3 also possible. PKS type 1 is basically virtually a single enzyme containing different modules and each module has got different domains of activity. Okay. So, first be very clear that it is a single enzyme with different modules. Basically, it is like a the different com the compartments of a train. So, each compartment is basically a module and the each seat inside the compartment is basically the domain okay, where you sit. So, in polyketide synthase 1, you have this uh, modular system, one particular enzyme, a big protein, it should not call it as, um, as it is a multifunctional enzyme and then you have different modules, each module has different domains. And then there is type 2, what you have, you have different, uh, the proteins are, are all individual, uh, that means these um, enzymes are not attached with each other to start with, but at the time of synthesis they come together and then, uh, then react in a cooperative manner to synthesize the polyketide. Okay. But we are uh, basically discussing the PKS type 1, which is the modular type of synthesis. Okay. What happens? I told you about that there should be a load, loading module uh, to start with, a loading module. Loading module is the module that is where, uh, where, uh, where the, the units, the building blocks gets attached first and then that is transferred to the first module. Okay. In the loading module, what you have? You have an acyl transferase and you have an acyl carrier protein that is your loading module. Okay. And then the, uh, so acyl transferase puts the starter unit because there are now two units that react with each other one is a starter unit which only participates only once that is in the beginning and there is what is called the extension unit. Okay. That extension unit repeats itself over and over again depending on the number of carbons that the microorganism or whatever system we are talking about that wants to put. Okay. So, depending on that you will have, uh, uh, you will have this uh, the number of extension units. Okay. So, you have a, so start with what it says here, 
each type 1, type 1 polyketide. See, this will be a little bit repetition of the of uh, the last uh, session stock because it is little bit it is easy, but little bit complicated and it is entirely new usually it is entirely new to the to the student. So, I am uh, spending more time on this type 1 polyketide synthase module consists of several domains. I have already explained what are domains and then uh, then the important thing is starting or loading module that is an acyl transferase and an ACP. Then you have elongation or extending modules so where the elongation unit uh, or the extension unit sometimes it is called elongation unit that means you extend the chain that is why it is called extension unit or you elongate the chain so it is called elong elongation unit. Okay. So, that elongation or extending modules comprise ketosynthase that is obligatory that has to be there and acyl transferase and an ACP these three have to be present in the module. Apart from that within third bracket it is written keto reductase is there enoyl reductase dehydratase. Again I repeat you should not worry about the sequence how it is written. The important thing is that what type of functionality or domain that is present. So, if these are these may be present entirely they may be absent or one or two may be present. Okay. So, ketosynthase acyl transferase ACP are the obligatory obligatory domains in a, a particular module. Apart from that you can have keto reductase, you can have enoyl reductase or uh, dehydratase, you can have enoyl reductase. Okay. And then this is repeated over and over again okay. module 1 then it goes to module 2 then module 3 module 4. Again I repeat depending on the number of extension units that uh, the microorganism wants to put the living system wants to incorporate. And then at the when the desired length of the polyketide has been made then what happens there is a termination domain because you have to terminate the process and that is called a thioesterase because at the end of it the the product is a sulfur a thio, in the form of a thioester which is linked to the ACP which is linked to an ACP and then you have to uh, release it from the ACP acyl carrier protein either by hydrolysis. So, it ends up as a carboxylic acid or it could be a cyclization that one of the internal yeah, there could be intramolecular new, uh, acylation trans acylation which can result in the formation of cyclic system. Okay. So, that is basically there are th these three are there important things. Then what are the domain activities acyl transferase I already told you acyl carrier protein that has got an SH to hold up the uh, to hold up your uh, the extension or the starter unit. Then ketosynthase that is the major reaction which carries out the Claisen type condensation via a decarboxylation process. Then you have a keto reductase, dehydratase, enoyl reductase these are not obligatory depends on the nature of the product that the living organism wants to make and then there is a thioesterase. So, this repeats and then finally, the thioesterase comes. So, that is so it is not difficult at all uh, you can actually do retro retro biosynthesis if I give a natural product you can do a retro biosynthesis uh, just some characteristic features. Uh, what I this is basically repetition the starter group usually acetyl coenzyme A, but again that may vary also it could be propionyl coenzyme A as you have seen in case of in case of erythromycin biosynthesis. Okay. The starter unit was propionyl CoA and the extension unit was methyl malonyl CoA okay. and um, so that is the AT and the ACP domain. Then elongation stages we have already discussed all these things elongation and finally, this cycle is repeated for each elongation module and, and the termination stage when the desired length is, uh, is obtained. Okay. So, now let us do some uh, let us exercise okay, that retro biosynthesis you know what is retro synthesis now this is what is called retro biosynthesis. Now, there are these, these are the two polyketides that are they are natural products uh, and they are biologically quite active 
basically they are some of the toxic agents that are present in many of our the, the cereals uh, or the staple food that we take like wheat, maize or rice all these things. So, uh, they have toxic effects. So, and so these are important because your cereal should not have any uh, any of this toxic agent. There is one more very toxic agent that is what is called aflatoxin. Okay. But anyway, we are not talking aflatoxin is a bigger molecule that is also a polyketide, but uh, we should take a uh, jump step by step. Okay. Now, if I want to first take this one, okay. this is a polyketide. How do I know? Is there any signature that after writing the natural product, you see that whether it is a polyketide? Usually, polyketides have lot of oxygens in it. There is no hard and fast rule but it is it's a basically an intuition that there are a lot of oxygens that will be present in the molecule and these oxygens usually have 1 3 relationship. They are having 1 3 relationship. Okay. So, I see there are a lot of oxygens there is oxygen here there is oxygen there there is oxygen here there is oxygen here, but there are uh, there is lack of oxygen in many of these carbon framework that is true. Now, the polyketide synthesis if you again uh, analyze carefully the the terminal uh, the the thioester which is hooked up with the ACP that ends up either as carboxylic acid or that ends up in the form of a lactone. Okay. So, you try to find out whether where is this carboxylic acid where is the carboxylate function. So, you see the carboxylate is function is here because this is an ester or a lactone. So, you can break at this point. So, if you break that that is the starting point. So, if you break that what you have is C O O H a carboxylic acid and then you have this double bond then double bond O and this is the methyl and you have OH. Okay. Now, you work as so there are two OHs here OH and OH. Now, you work backwards. Okay. Mm, what will happen? See this is your basically C O S A C P the final before the hydrolysis and then you start from there and then work backwards. So, you have a CH 2, you have a CO, just put whatever is the uh, redox level do not uh, uh, means do not think too much about that. If you see which put a carbonyl here for the time being and then there is another oxygen here put as a carbonyl and then there should be a carbonyl here by by rule that 1 3 position there would be oxygen. So, there must be a carbonyl at was there, but somehow ultimately through some condensation reaction that carbonyl is no longer there and then you continue. So, there is there should be a carbonyl here then there should be 1 2 3 yeah. there should be 1 2 3. So, then a carbonyl already present. So, there must be a carbonyl here 1 3 position to match that and then again after the methylene you should have a carbonyl here and then you have what methyl and OH. So, OH means carbonyl. Okay. Maybe the S that S ACP is making the problem. So, there is a methyl here this is a S A C P and this is the methyl that is present here. Okay. So, now this is an as so the starting unit is what starter unit is or the starting unit is this acetyl coenzyme A. Then you have how many extension unit this is 1 you may be take another color I think that will be better. So, this is this is 1 extension unit this is the second one this is the third one, this is the fourth one, this is the fifth one, this is the sixth one and this is the seventh. Okay. 
So, that is how you uh, let us see whether this is C H 2 C O, okay. then this is C H 2 C O, then C H 2 C O, then actually this should take this one sorry, uh, there is some I just erase this part yeah, this is so that is why let me see. Uh, so, what will happen this is C H 2 C O, then you have C H 2 C O, then you have C H 2 C O then you have C H 2 C O and then you have C H 2 C O. Okay. So, how many extension units are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, that means, there are 8 condensation reactions that will happen and if it is a type 1, if it is synthesized by a type 1 polyketide synthase. So, you can now write, uh, you can write the the modules. So, the first module is I will just write few of them A T and then A C P that is the loading module. Then the second module remember it all starts from here the, the, the reaction starts from here. So, the second module means you have gone up to this point. Now, what is in the actual you have seen a C H 2 that means the not the second this is the first module sorry the first module this is the loading module. So, first module I said that H module should have a T uh, should have a keto synthase right after the A C P then you should have a T you should have a C P and whether you should have an other other ones or not. Because this is in this ends up as a C H 2 that means, it should have keto reductase to this pin is little bit thick that is the problem. Uh, so, you should have a keto reductase right here, you should have a in oil reductase and you should have also a de, uh, sorry dehydratase and then in oil reductase. Again the sequence does not uh, mean much, it is just the activities that is what is important. Okay. So, this should be the first module the first module should have all the possible domains that are required, because it ends up as a saturated system. So, it should be reduced the carbonyl. So, initially it will be carbonyl, but then it will be reduced dehydrate then the alcohol is uh, dehydrated and then the dehydrate uh, the enoyl compound is reduced by enoyl reductase. Okay. And then, but all along it is it is held up by the A C P it is A C P is holding the whole chain with a carbonyl at the beta position and then first it shows it to the keto synthase and then it is reduced then it takes to the dehydratase. So, it is dehydrated then it takes the uh, molecule and shown it to the enoyl reductase and then the enoyl reductase reduces the double bond then it uh, then the first the job of the first module is over. So, now the A C P will transfer that whole chain into the into the second module and each module if you look at the modules of erythromycin I can show you each module I, I do not know whether it is visible, but let us see each module starts with a keto synthase and ends up with the A C P. So, what happens and in between there are these acyl transferase then you know uh, this keto reductase all these things are present. Okay. So, what happens the first the loading module transfers it to the keto synthase reaction takes place between the A C P and the keto synthase the whole chain is held up here and this is which because there is a keto reductase here. Then it is transferred to the next keto synthase. So, all modules end up with A C P and starts with a keto synthase they are side by side. So, that the A C P can transfer it immediately to the keto synthase of the next module. So, I will not proceed any further it will just uh, I will not complete that uh, by this way you can tell what is the second module. In the second module check what is the status of the carbonyl and you see the, uh, the carbon is having a carbonyl that means, second module has what has a keto synthase then acyl transfer that is there and last there should be an A C P. Is there any other domain? No, there is no other domain because it is a carbonyl. And then the sec the next domain 
next uh, module not domain the next module should have again all three because it is CH 2 and after that the module that is the this is the first module this is the second module that is the third module the fourth module now there is this double bond. So, what will happen now that means it is now present as a so that so keto reductase is present and dehydratase is present. So, by that way you can complete the entire biosynthetic gene sequences and along with the uh, entire the gene not the sequence entire biosynthetic gene and then uh, also assign the protein that is that is produced from them okay, that is actually translated from them. So, this is the way you do it if you want to do for this compound this is another metabolite secondary metabolite again you find out where is the carboxy again there is a lactone here that means there is a carboxy here. So, that will be what that will be a carbonyl this will be another carbonyl and then it goes like this. So, then the next carbon is this one. So, that is there this is the other one. So, by this way then there is OH then there is this one CH 2 CO. So, like this is the CO SCO ACP and then you have CH 2 CO then CH 2 CO then CH 2 CO CH 2 CO CH 2 CO CH 2 CO okay. only you have to find out what is the status of this what we are assigning carbonyl ultimately in the metabolite what is their status. I could see that um, if you break these bonds actually they are all carbonyl because phenol this is enolic enolic group enol means actually that is the other form of the carbonyl right other form of the carbonyl. So, when you see an aromatic ring with a wedge that means actually that is a ketone functionality that is not a reduced carbonyl functionality because phenols means actually enols and enols means it is the tautomeric form of the ketone. Okay. So, this way you can work uh, work out the biosynthesis uh, of a natural product if some natural product is given to you the first thing you see what are the oxygenation, uh, oxygenation pattern and then if there are a lot of oxygens. So, you might think of the polyketide and then if it is a polyketide then try to put the oxygens at the proper position identify the starter unit and the extension unit and then you can uh, finally, work out the work backwards and find what are the starter and the extension unit. How to prove that that, that is the extension unit that is the starter unit what they do they put C 13 level starter and then find out where it ends up or you find C 13 level extension unit and then do by NMR study uh, of the secondary metabolite you can say that whether that extension unit has been incorporated or not. Okay. So, that is just by simple NMR technique, but you have to use labeled isotopically labeled uh, your starter units or extension units. Okay. So, that is all about the polyketide synthesis I think that is the end of the antimicrobial uh, antimicrobial agents. Now, we will go to another uh, topic that is um, that is and that is uh, not microbes because microbes are are organisms which can uh, which can amplify by themselves which does cell division and then which can grow by themselves provided sufficient food is added from outside or it can extract the food from outside. A another very uh, important small tiny entity which also infects cause infection in the body microbes do that microbes include bacteria include fungus okay, fungi, but uh, then parasites of course, uh, are included in that, but apart from that you have <coughs> something which is called a virus you all know this virus and we get viral infection quite often. And the question is virus actually do not fall into the group of microbes, because microbes by themselves they are capable of multiplying, 
whereas, virus cannot multiply by themselves, they need a living organism to replicate and then multi ultimately do multiplication or amplify a new virus particles. Okay. So, a virus is nothing but a small infectious agent that replicates only inside a living cell of an organism. So, there is a difference between microbes and uh, this virus. Okay. Virus are non living as such outside when they are left alone, but if they enter inside the body, they utilize the machinery of the host and then try to and then grow. Okay. So, these are virus and so virus can infect all types of life forms, they can infect animals even plants are susceptible to viral infection and uh, plants to microorganisms including bacteria, archaea, humans we do suffer from, we suffer from more of viral infection than bacterial infection to be, uh, to be honest to you. Now, the question is how do you uh, design antiviral agents. Okay. Obviously, viruses life cycle will be entirely different from the microbes, because the microbes uh, we have I have shown you that there are different targets, you have the cell wall, you have the membrane, you have the nucleic acid, you have the proteins, you have the metabolites all these are there, you have transcription you can stop the translation process all these things are there, but uh, in virus those type of mechanism are basically hijacked those mechanisms by which things multiply they belong to the mostly belong to the host. So, if you try to stop those processes basically you are interfering with the host's own mechanism to multiply. So, that is what is the problem and that caused uh, delay much delay in developing antiviral compounds. So, our next um, basically next session we will talk about how to develop antiviral agents, but now before we end this session we would like to know what are the different types of virus, how they uh, what is their life cycle, how they multiply when they get in inside an organism. Okay. I think these are viruses are different types. Uh, different types, but the one common thing is that all viruses have what is called an envelope an outside coat made up of glycoproteins and then there is something a circular thing which is called this is called capsid and inside the capsid. So, this is called capsid and inside the capsid you have the nuclear material means I am not saying it is DNA, you have the nuclear material okay, which helps it to multiply by hijacking the uh, host, uh, host organism. Okay. Now, these are glyco, this is GP, glycoprotein, these are very important because the glycoprotein actually recognizes if a virus enters into my body, the virus particles are first recognized by my cell, the cells that are present inside my body and these glycoproteins help this, uh, this recognition process. Okay. Our cells are all having receptors, we all uh, we are exposed, we know now what are receptors, these are actually basically present uh, and the membrane of the cell and with the receptor moiety pointing outwards to the extracellular side. Okay. So, there are different types of interactions that can go on to this receptor side. So, the virus particle comes and sits here, but the recognition is through the glycoprotein. So, envelope is very important and then inside there is again another uh, coating circular thing which is called capsid and the capsid is enclosing the nuclear material and along with some, some proteins. So, inside there is this nuclear material and plus some not many, but some proteins are there which are essential for viral replication. Okay. Now, depending on these nuclear material viruses are classified. Okay. 
viruses are classified like if the nuclear material is DNA then that is called a DNA virus. If the nuclear material is RNA then that is called an RNA virus okay. and if the nu and uh, but RNA virus there is a special type which is called retrovirus. I will come uh, to that retrovirus, but let us try to find out what is a DNA virus. So, DNA virus means the name suggests that there will be DNA will be the nuclear material. Okay. Now, the DNA whether it is present in double strand or single strand both are possible. So, you have double strand DNA virus, you have single strand SS, SS so DS DNA virus or you can have single strand DNA virus that is also possible. RNA virus usually they have a single strand, but RNA is the genetic material. So, I can say nuclear material I can uh, basically this is the genetic material means without it the vi virus will not be able to do anything material okay. genetic material. So, if the genetic material is DNA that is the DNA virus, if it is RNA then it is RNA virus and in retrovirus this is also the genetic material is RNA, but I will say what is the difference between RNA virus and retrovirus that will be in my uh, next slide. In the DNA virus what happens? This is the see the entire virus particle is called virion that is called virion. The virion is having this envelope and with some with some receptor sites means that is for the recognition and then it binds see this is the receptor on the on the cell this is the entire cell host cell. So, this is recognized by this and then by a process what is called uh, usually what is called endocytosis it enters the virus not the whole virus enters it is only the capsid portion that enters. Okay enters into the cell and now if it is a DNA virus then that capsid goes off the DNA is injected into the nucleus of the host cell and this DNA usually uh, there are exceptions usually that uh, that now that can become integrated with the DNA of the with the DNA of the host that means, the host has DNA like this and if the virus has a DNA which is blue color suppose, then the virus will what the virus will do? It integrates the viral DNA into the DNA strand that is one way. Uh, the other, other option is that it does not integrate, but it utilizes the host uh, DNA polymerase to make the the replication to have the replication of the uh, of the DNA and then it can then form the mRNA by utilizing the host RNA polymerase. So, basically the virus first is recognized by the cell the envelope falls off it goes inside with the capsid the capsid falls off the DNA is injected inside the nucleus and then there are two possibilities either that DNA now does not integrate with the host DNA or it can integrate these are the two possibilities. If it integrates okay, from that the normal process like uh, replication and transcription that will take place. So, the transcription means you are making the a mRNA you are making the a mRNA and a mRNA comes out. So, that means this a mRNA what is being made will contain some mRNA corresponding to the virus DNA and they will make the required proteins and then basically form new virus capsids and finally, this is this comes out uh, and an envelope is also formed around the virus. So, DNA virus has uh, basically it is a direct way the DNA goes in it can integrate or it cannot it may not integrate remain in the nucleus and then by the nuclear machinery that means, the DNA polymerase and the RNA polymerase uh, the mRNA of the virus is synthesized that comes out it is encircled by the uh, by the capsid forms all the capsid means the 
the required proteins that is made from the mRNA and then it comes out of the that is called budding. This process is what is called the budding. Okay. Viral, uh, this is the this is the DNA virus. You have the RNA virus, RNA virus you have again this uh, this is the envelope, this is the capsid and the nuclear the genetic material is now RNA. So, it goes inside again recognized and then goes inside. So, that is the capsid along with the RNA and then what happens this falls off the capsid uh, falls off. So, this is now the viral genome, but this is RNA. Now, usually you know that central dogma of biology is that always information flows from DNA to RNA to protein. After the discovery of the RNA virus and the retrovirus that uh, that notion or what is called the central dogma that uh, that is becoming ineffective here is does not hold true in case of retrovirus and RNA virus because in RNA virus the genetic material is RNA and then RNA now RNA cannot be integrated into the DNA that is not possible because the RNA has to be taken to the DNA and then DNA follows the typical replication transcription and translation pathway. So, the virus has a RNA here. Okay. So, first it is the RNA is as acting as a template the DNA uh, sorry this, this is the RNA. So, another RNA m RNA is made from directly made from here. See you do not have to go to the DNA now, because if you have the RNA and if it is remember that when the DNA strands double stranded DNA is copied one of the strand remains silent, okay. but that is the coding strand that means, what is the ultimate sequence of the mRNA that will be decided by the that will be the same as the coding strand. Okay. But, the template strand that is also called the antisense strand, uh, the template strand has the has all the uh, has the uh, complementary basis here. Okay. So, now the question is when the virus has the RNA, what is the status of this RNA, whether it is the it is the RNA of the complementary of the coding strand or the non coding strand that is important. So, you have that is why you have two types of RNA viruses positive strand RNA virus, negative strand RNA virus. Negative means antisense means non coding if you remember one strand which does not act as a template that is called coding strand that is also called sense strand that is also called positive strand. Negative strand is the non coding strand that is also called the template strand and that is also called the negative strand. Okay. So, depending on this uh, what type of RNA is present positive, uh, positive strand of RNA or negative strand of RNA that will decide what type of uh, life cycle the virus will be having. Uh, I think we will discuss this classification in the next session for now on what we know that viruses are classified into DNA, RNA, virus and retrovirus. Okay. So, we will come back in the next class. Thank you.